Greetings YouTube. Today I'll be showing off the Arms and Armor Annual Edition by Robert Held. 30 Outstanding Articles on Weaponry by Leading Arms and Arm Armor Historians of the World. Originally $9.95, which was written out and not um, and not uh, and not, not, no, not used by numerals, not, not uh, expressed as numerals. And it says volume one. To the best of my knowledge, there was never a following volume, which is very depressing. I believe this was originally made, printed in 1973, and this is an original copy. Um, I don't remember where I picked it up. It's been quite a while. Yep, yeah, here we go. Robert um, Held, Florence, Italy, December 1973. And with the contents in here, we have... Um, uh, an article about knights in the 14th century, an article on wheel locks, daggers of the court of the Medici, things like that. Some just very in-depth and well-illustrated um, articles that go very much uh, into detail. They go deep. This is all, this is really good long form uh, uh, journalism. Something you don't see a lot of any longer. You get a lot of blurbs out there, especially on the on the interwebs. Um, an article on wheel locks, which is a type of firearm that uh, was forgotten um, by many people. It's like a, it, it, people think of match locks, they think of flint locks, but they forget that the wheel lock was part of that evolutionary step. And here we have a classic um, axe that was also a. Uh, a firearm, so a combination I've always loved, and I think is highly appropriate to uh, to uh, the dwarves and fantasies. And we have an extensive note at the end of this article. I mean, that's there are books out there that don't have that that don't have um, um, notes that accept that. And we have a wheel lock dagger of the Menace Court. So we have we, this whole this dagger breaks down. This is how this dagger breaks down, um, and it's just. Fascinating stuff. Now, I consider, I personally consider this to be, here we have notes on crossbows in Switzerland. I consider this to be an, a key element of any weapons reference library. If you want to have a weapons reference, reference library, I think you really need to find a copy of this book. I'm not sure if it's in reprint or not. Um, these are stone bows, which are bows designed to fire pellets. Uh, I've used stone bows and stone, cross, and stone crossbows in fantasy games in the past. Here we have some really lovely armor. An introduction uh, to Japanese uh, sword guards, or sua. And remember in 73, this would have been relatively new information to a lot of people in America. Um, they, 73 was uh, when martial arts and, and, and Asian martial history and traditions really were being exposed. The winged hussars of uh, Poland. Looks like something out of a uh, Warhammer, doesn't it? Look at that. Then we have the French royal armor um, as reflected in the designs of Etienne de Lyon. De Lyon? I think that was. I probably butchered that guy's name, but there you go. I got Etienne right, I think. The world's oldest known flintlock pistol, an article about a speculation about a particular pistol, how just how old it is, because again, flintlocks were the follow, followed wheel locks, and of course they may have been overlap there. Who knows when the actual first flintlock was designed? That kind of technical um, information sometimes is lost to the annals of history. Um, a primer of repole um, rip gun locks. I mean, this is really, really detailed. You have to you have to have a real interest in this kind of thing, such as myself, to, to get into this. Um, but I love this. I, I've read this before, and it's, and it's just such a fascinating book. Of course, we have a lot of swords because swords are always very popular when it comes to uh, uh, those that are people that are collecting um, weapons. And here we have an article about a particular inventor and his and his signature and his and, and the import to it of to collectors. Then we have a gunner's dagger, which is designed for uh, measuring. So it's got measurements in the on the dagger's blade, which could also be used as a weapon. And some of these are incredibly pointy um, and quite beautiful. 
Um, then we have some uh, an article about someone that was known for doing scroll work. I'm sorry, I'm, I think I'm, I'm, I'm risking my camera. It's getting close to dying, so we're going to try to move through this. Um, lots of pistols. And we have um, an iron battle barreled blunderbuss. I've always loved a blunderbuss. The idea of ancient shotguns makes me smile. Uh, sorry, we have gunnery uh, tools and um, uh, uh, gun making tools and, and uh, tools used in the production of gunpowder. The function of the perfected Lorenzoni repeating flintlock system. And uh, just Sorry, makes, this stuff makes me smile. It always has notes of firearms of the Tesco Emilian Apaneni means. Academics. You gotta love them. They don't know how to title things to make them roll off the tongue, do they? Uh, the first British naval uniform. So if you're into costuming or cosplaying and you really want to get that nailed down, here's an article about that. Napoleon was not afraid of it. Um, and I believe they're talking about air rifles, because that was, these are period air rifles. The Austrians actually had an entire unit um, armed with air rifles. And we have the Trafalgar sword, uh, Swords of Honor. The hidden marks of, uh, marks on Boutet firearms, or Boutet firearms. Sorry. I have an entire book that deals with sword marks, so yeah, there are there are uh, people that are really into this kind of thing. The development of percussion primers. It's getting to the point where I have to kind of flip it this way if you don't mind. It's easier. Um, Sabre tachés, which I believe are armor components or vestigial armor components. Oops. The final word on the Vendetti volcanic controversy. I don't even remember what that controversy is. But uh, apparently that was the uh, and a unique trio of Winchester 1866 carbines, which is the depicted on the cover of the uh, of the uh, publication because it is aimed at an American audience. So they, I guess they want to have the Winchesters on there. So it's a fascinating book, and I think anyone that's into weapons really needs to own a copy.